body up with butter and take me to the freaker's bow. <laughs> All right, folks, it is Friday night here, June 28, 2019. I am Grimner. I may be alone tonight. It sounds like I'm going to be alone. Moose Girl is a busy girl there in her hometown at her home, actually, but yeah, she's got some uh, uh, stuff she needs to be doing, so you probably just get me, but it's still the Freaker's Ball tonight and not the Balls to the Wall, just because, hey, I announced it as Freaker's Ball it's early, early. So, uh, anyway, welcome to everybody out there and all the places you may be tuned in and listening to us, wherever that may be. If you're on the Freaker's Ball show page there on RealLibertyMedia.com, you're in the right place. Yes, indeed, you got the video there, you got the, uh, you got the chat right there, you got everything right there. It's cool, man, it's cool. Uh, so check that out, and uh, if you're not over there already, you can also just watch the video if you have another way to chat with us, which you can do through reallibertymedia.com or your own IRC client. So if you go to vaughn.live slash reallibertymedia, you'll have the, the video right feed right there. And there, there is a chat over there that I'm, I, I kind of watch a little bit, but it's there, so it's on. Yeah, you can check that out. Uh, but if you're on the audio stream, you could be there on rlmradio.xyz. You could be there on realliberty.org. And freedomsnetwork.com is back up. It was down for a few days there. So, um, yeah, so freedomsnetwork.com is back up. So we're there. We are on TuneIn as well and uh, Internet Radio and oh, a few other spots uh, out there, uh, Shoutcast and who knows where all else. So, uh, yeah, there's lots of places to tune in and say hi and howdy. Uh, big thanks to Bo Diddy for getting that Freedoms Network back up and going. Appreciate it. Big thanks to Ant over there on RealLiberty.org for updating the site there uh, this week, earlier this week, and keeping things going there. He does a very nice job of keeping everything operating smoothly on RealLiberty.org. And, um, but, but, oh, yeah. Uh, how do you, anybody on Minds that may be tuned in, uh, from the notifications I sent out or via the Twitter notifications? All y'all out there, glad to have you with us here this evening on the Freaker's Bow, y'all. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, oh, yeah. All these folks over here in the Real Liberty Media chat on irc.freenode.net, which is where you connect to. If you do connect using one of the web chat clients on either rlmradio.xyz or reallibertymedia.com. Yeah, both of those bring you right on in here to this chat room. Where am I? Oh, there I am. I see. I was, I was displaced a little bit. Um, okay. <laughs> Looking at the list of names here in the chat that uh, shows up on the side. Hang on a second. I need a sip of water. I got to I got a tickle. <clears throat> oh, that's better. I think that's better. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's been a really hot day, so in dry, very dry. Uh, humidity around 15% or less going on, you know, so uh, it keeps the throat running a little bit on the dry side. Plus, my AC has been working overtime. Uh, this this definitely was the hottest day so far this year. Uh, in the it was in the low 90s, but uh, uh, we, we've been you know staying below 90 here. Uh, but uh, today we we got right on up there into like 92, 93 degrees, 94 maybe. Um, anyway, this was definitely the hottest day of the year. However, uh, June is supposed to be the hottest month in Moriarty, and it has been typically in all the years that I've been here. Uh, which is 14 years now, 14 years in one week, actually. Uh, last Friday was my 14-year anniversary of living here in this particular house. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, through all those years, June has always been the hottest month. This year, not so much. Yeah, I mean, it's, we've had days in the 70s and days in the 60s. So, um, yeah, So, but today was a, a little on the warmer side. Of course, there's only two more days left in June. Then we start July. And uh, a 
according to normality, or what is expected here, weather-wise, beginning of July, also brings in monsoon season. So we should start be getting our afternoon rain showers every day. Uh, thunder showers, I should say, because we get a lot of thunder and lightning here in uh, central New Mexico. So, uh, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that, actually. I, I, I love the thunderstorms. Anyway, so hi and howdy and welcome to all the folks here in the chat. We got the barman and the beetle, cowboy cat, myself, and the moose girl. Uh, we got Don Carroll, D.C., Anti and Chalcedony, and Miss Graham Z, if she's uh, tuned in, not out there in the garden still. Uh, we got, we got, I be, oh, another Don C. Okay, we got Java Doctor and Meister Brow and Miss Kate. Uh, Mr. Rome's A.K.A. Trust No One. The Vanna Whitebot, Mr. Vin E. Vincent Easley II, uh, the weather dark bot that gives us our weather, tells us our weather, here in the chat room. Uh, Miss Beth Z, hi, hi, how you doing out there, Beth? Uh, we got Phantom and Well Then, and, and Well Then, and as Mo2, Mr. Benoit just joined us. Hey, Benoit, he says, cry me a river, his heart is sinking. And no rain in his town. Miss Circle, the lovely Miss Circle from over there in Denmark. Hey, I didn't see your other half over here, Miss Circle. I don't know where that flash somebody is, but he's not showing up here in the list. And we got, who else do we got here? We got Frumpy and Gromit and JJ's from Scotland. We got Mr., I think it's a Mr. Kiss uh, that, that came on over from Chloe's channel. Uh, we got Ponder Banner, which is basically just Vincent Easley. We got smart as in what? And we also, I do believe, have Chloe listening in another spot out there, over there. I know she was hearing me on the audio stream a little bit earlier. So, hey, Chloe, how the hell are you doing? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much everybody here in the, in the chat. But there's other folks out there listening in other spots. So, welcome to you all as well, you anonymous bastards. Um, what can I tell you about what's going on? I, I, you know, I was giving you those garden updates on a fairly regular basis, and I haven't been doing that because there's really nothing to, to tell you about. Uh, what, what I can say is the plants that I have look healthy and strong, but they're miniature. They're miniature. They're small. It's like they look like they want to grow, but... There's, I, I, I mean, it, we're, we're all basically into July here. I should have some good sized plants, some, some, some maybe some fruits or vegetables going already. But they're just tiny little plants so far, so I don't know. Uh, I, I do have hopes for this one tomato plant. <laughs> and I've got, I've got several tomato plants in several different jiffy pots growing. I've got uh, little mini, mini, mini miniature strawberry plants growing. Uh, I got some jalapenos going. The bell peppers never came up. I don't know why the bell peppers never came up, uh, but they did not. Uh, but but I've got I've got the honeydew, I've got the cantaloupe, I got the watermelon. Uh, I got one little lowly. I would call it a head of lettuce, but it's just like leaves. It's not, it didn't form. It hasn't grown. I don't know how long it takes to form into a head, but I would think faster than that. I, I think basically this year's a bust as far as the garden goes, but a learning experience. And I, I've, I've, uh, I've sit, try some roundups. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Um, <laughs> you're a funny guy. Uh, but uh, so I think next year, and I've learned some things, you know, maybe to uh, check the, uh, the soil for pH balance, whether it's acidic or, 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 or ver opposite of that, which is uh, base, I guess. I don't know. Acid, base, those are opposites. I, I Anyway, um, or or just to get it balanced. Um, and what else? Oh, some other uh, different fertilizer methods. Uh, working on some uh, composting stuff. Not much, just a little bit, uh, but some composting stuff. So uh, this year's probably a bust. I don't know. I, I I don't see. Oh yeah, I do have some apple trees. I got four little apple trees, and they're like two inches, three inches. <laughs> tiny little apple trees in this big container so I have hope for those because those should grow 
throughout the winter and uh, into next year and turn it into real plants, uh, turn it into real trees. And I'm collecting more apple seeds, and uh, so we'll, we'll, I, I hope to have like a whole, eventually, and I, I, as far as I know, it takes like 10 years for an apple to go from seed to fruit. But as long as they keep growing, I'll be fine. Uh, so I'll, eventually, somewhere down the line, I'll have some productive fruit trees if I'm, you know, around in 10 years, which, who knows? Who knows if anybody else will be around tomorrow, no less 10 years from now. <laughs> but anyway, I'm, I'm trying to grow those. Uh, those those are looking all right. Those are looking all right. They look like two little tiny miniature trees. Well, with the with the leaves that are on them, they're, they're way too big for the size of the tree. But you know, well, whatever. Anyway, so that's been kind of fun. Uh, I, I I don't know, um, but I will uh, try and do better next year. If if indeed none of this stuff actually gets gets to where it actually does he produce anything this year. Uh, hope springs eternal. However, so uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Ten years from now, I'll, I'll, I'll teach you how, all how to do apple whatever. Uh, yeah, I'll have apples coming out of my... Where, what, whatever, wherever. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how, how that all works. <laughs> Oh, what else is interesting? Um, nothing really interesting, so I'm not even going to bother telling you about the DVR issues I had this week. <laughs> uh, but suffice it to say, Microsoft sucks ass, and I had to I had to actually stop using not the Microsoft program. I could have stopped, and I. I do have some other good ones available to me, uh, Cody and, and uh, a couple others that I installed that seem to work great, uh, but are, I'm not as familiar with as I am the Windows Media Center uh, thing, uh, but there was a lot of problems with that, and I had to go to an external service to provide me some information. Okay, I think that's enough of my personal nonsense for now. Um, <laughs> let's play some music to get this show started here Moose Girl if you're out there listening hi <laughs> and maybe you can answer this question as the people here in the chat maybe can also answer this question everybody's got their own answer for this question hopefully because uh, your answer is not going to be the same as mine I don't think it has. I work at a section site where you can get over some new scenarios. You know what? This is a good channel for all of the and you can use it for the one you're hearing now. And remember, I'll see you later. <laughs> All right, uh, that is the uh, first and probably only time you will hear a Bon Jovi song on the Freakers Ball or Ball to the Wall. And you wouldn't have heard it if Leo hadn't had done it himself. Yeah, Leo Maraccioli there uh, covering Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer. I just, you know, there's only two guys that I know, musicians that I know that are from New Jersey and I can't stand either one of them, Bon Jovi and Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a fan of them Jersey Boys. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the Jersey Boys either. Uh, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, there you go, Leo Maraccioli. Yeah, he, he always does awesome covers. So uh, that's cool. Anyway, before that, we had the Animals and Don't Bring Me Down, a Monroe retro Monroe's retro release, and we kicked it off with the Tubes there. What do you want from life? Benoit says Ohio is Jovi. I, I was sure he was a New Jersey boy. I don't know why. He just seems like a New Jersey boy. <laughs> I, I could be wrong. 
It felt like I haven't been wrong before, or that I won't be again, but uh, I was pretty sure, for some reason, however, for some reason, that Bon Jovi was a New Jersey guy. He just seems like a, a one of those New Jersey folk. I had other words there for that, but uh, yeah, you know, we'll uh, we'll keep that private inside of my own head. Um, and Benoit does like the boss, which I never. That that may be part of the reason I never liked him was him calling himself or other people calling him the boss. Yeah, what the hell is he the boss of? He ain't the boss of me. That's that much I know. <laughs> You're a third cousin to Bruce Springsteen? Benoit? Wow. Yeah, you get any of that you get any of that, that cool that that, that cool uh, Bruce Springsteen money? Do you offer any of that up for you? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're a third cousin of Bon Jovi. Oh. Well, I feel bad for you. And what? 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 Huh? What? Huh? Says he can't stand the boss. Which, I'm there. I'm there with you, man. All right. All right. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, anyway. Let's get on to some stuff here. I got stories uh, that that it does suck. They all suck. They all suck according to the to uh, the bot there. Which uh, yeah. Oh, so many places to go. I I just don't even know where to start. But I guess we'll start here. Uh, get 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 this guy out of the way before we move on because Trump really and why am I going to talk about Trump? That Egypt. Oh, Chloe doesn't like Leo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why do we got to talk about Trump? Well, it's not in a flattering light, let me tell you that. Ugh. Idiots. As if they could actually do this anyway. But here they go. From techdirt.com posted today. Uh, by Mike Masnick in the From Not This Bullshit Again department. Here we go again. Trump administration considers outlawing encryption. Well, here we go again. According to Politico, on uh, Wednesday at Trump's National Security Council meeting, a proposal was floated that the administration should back legislation that would outlaw encryption. Because, you know, with encryption, they can't monitor everything you do. Or, if they can actually break that encryption, it's a, it's a hard time for them. And they don't want to have a hard time. They want everything to be out there, open, in, in the plain text, so not only they can read it, but all the hackers that want to come after you can read it too. All the hackers that want to steal your info can get your info. Of course, that's not how it'll be framed should they actually decide to go down this path. Instead, there'll be nonsense about responsible encryption and lawful access. But make no mistake, what's being proposed is outlawing encryption. Without a doubt. Senior officials, authorita, debated whether to ask Congress to effectively outlaw end-to-end -end encryption, which scrambles data so that only its sender and the recipient can read it. These people, <laughs> that's mighty generous of you calling them people, told Politico, uh, tech companies like Apple, Google, and Facebook have increasingly built end-to-end -end encryption into their products and software in recent years, billing it as privacy and security feature, but frustrating the authority investigating terrorism, drug trafficking, and, oh, child pornography. The two paths uh, were... <laughs> The two paths were 
to either put out a statement in a general position on encryption and say that they would continue to work on a solution or to ask Congress for legislation, said one of the so-called people. It's unclear whether the final decision, uh, what the final decision was, but if it was to back such a law, of course not a law, a code, we'll know about it soon enough. There are some sensible folks on this issue, including some of the intelligence communities who actually understand the security value of encryption. The State Department and Commerce, Depart Commerce Departments are both also said to support keeping encryption legal. Legal, not unlawful, not lawful, legal. It's mostly the law enforcement jackbooted thug folks who are against encryption, including parts of the Department of Justice, the FBI, ICE, and the Secret Service. As if any of those need any more power. Homeland Security, which ICE is part of, uh, is apparently internally divided. It's been said before, but this is not a debate. There's no debate, and there's no uh, on, one, on the one hand or on one or on the other hand. There is no privacy versus security. There is no privacy and weakened security versus actual privacy and actual security. There is literally no debate to be had here. If you understand the issues, encryption is essential. And any effort to take away end-to-end -end encryption is outlawing technology that keeps you and I and everyone else safe, or safer anyhow, while Senators Feinstein and Burr uh, released a truly dangerous bill a few years back to outlaw encryption, uh, who, who knows what sort of nonsense would come out of this and whether or not it could actually get enough support in Congress. Let's hope not. But uh, just the fact that the security folks now need to waste a ton of time and energy on this shit all over again is immensely frustrating and wasteful. The debate was over decades ago, and there's no reason to do it again. Now, I, I don't know about you and how you feel about encryption. Hopefully you understand the, the need for it in your personal online life. Uh, it is a very valuable tool. Um, if you're not using a VPN, the virtual private network, which encrypts your data end to end, uh, then you're you're messing up. You really you really need to be uh, using a, a VPN for one thing as as a major encryption tool on your machine on your data. Uh, it's it's extremely important because there are people out there that will steal your information and use it to steal your life, um, you know, via identity theft and other such things along those lines. So uh, if, if, these, if the Trumpster decides to back this kind of code, law, not law, um, ugh. I mean, he's horrible enough as it is. Does he really want to go down this line? Does he really want to walk that path? <laughs> I don't know. All right. Well, let's follow up that terrible story with a maybe slightly better story. Um, <laughs> and I say maybe slightly better just because, well, well, you'll see. From High Times Magazine, High Times Online, HighTimes.com. So it's re it is really good news for certain folk, um, and and I think overall for the state of Texas. Texas County Prosecutor uh, dismissed hundreds of marijuana misdemeanors, thanks to the recent change in law. Misdemeanors are getting reviewed and dismissed. So earlier this month, Texas Governor Greg Abbott signed a bill that will legalize industrial hemp. How nice of him, since it's already legalized on a national basis due to the 2018 Farm Bill uh, there, um, and CBD products. So 
as before you could not buy CBD down there in Texas, uh, this will allow it. Not today, but soon. Um, some county prosecutors are grappling with the fallout of the new law. Namely, what the hell to do with more than 200 pot-related offenses? The district attorney's office in Tarrant County, Texas, has dismissed 235 uh, marijuana misdemeanors that have been filed since June 10th, a mere three weeks ago. Uh, not even, yeah, about three weeks ago, uh, according to the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Those misdemeanors now require lab tests, but there's one massive dilemma. Under the new law, most labs in the state are unable, not unwilling, just unable, to differentiate between marijuana, hemp, and hemp-related products. They can't do it. They can't figure it out. The new law in Texas signed by Abbott on June 10th, oh, it did already go into effect, okay, went into effect immediately and allows farmers in the state to cultivate hemp for industrial purposes while also clarifying which CBD products are legal. The signing on the law came on the heels of Congress's passage of the 2018 Farm Bill in December, which remo removed a huge obstacle for states by making hemp legal on a federal level. But both the federal law and the new state law in Texas complicated long-standing legal definitions of what constituted marijuana and hemp. Under the new laws, the concentration of THC would be the chief distinguishing factor of the two. The testimony before the Houston Forensic Science Board earlier this month, James Miller, a seized drug analyst, what? Oh, uh, he analyzes seized drug. He's not a seized... All right. <laughs> That's a funny way. Anyway, a seized drug analyst said the new laws, which define hemp as containing less than 0.3% THC and marijuana as anything above that threshold, caught a lot of us by surprise. In order to conduct a, the necessary testing, Miller said the law would require additional equipment. As such, Tarrant County District Attorney Sharon Wilson told the Fort Worth Telegram, uh, Star Telegram, that a lab report in our estimation is now a requirement of the crime because it's the only way you can tell legal from illegal. Most of the dismissed cases, according to Wilson, were for possession of two ounces or less of marijuana. Those tests could be very expensive because they're rare. Uh, Wilson said, adding that her office is close to finding a viable lab. Uh, it's too bad about that. We we think we found two, Wilson said. I'll be communicating with our police agencies about what those labs are so that, uh, that so that they can get the threaded needed <laughs> threaded needed lab result and refile the case. The bill to legalize industrial hemp drew bipartisan support in the Texas State Legislature Slater, with both Democrats and Republicans alike applauding what they said could be a boon, will be a boon for local farmers, for, for the, everybody all across the nation farmers, for all kinds of various industries. Hemp is an awesome product that can be used in so many ways. And I know I've... I've I've spoken about this many, many, many old times. Ah. <sighs> Sid Miller, the state's agricultural commissioner, said that Texas will be a leader in the hemp production. I don't know about that, but they can produce a lot of hemp. They get a lot of farmland down there, and they can certainly produce a lot of hemp. This will be another tool for farmers that are looking to diversify their farming operations, Miller said. More than 40 st states have laws allowing for industrial hemp. So, hooray. Good. Hemp. Hemp for all. That's my, my take on the matter. Uh, yes, uh, I love the whole hemp idea, the concept, the, the, the whole thing about hemp. Everything about hemp is just freaking awesome. And 
on the heels of that, let me bring you this here from Forbes. Forbes, they're a financial financial website. Why is Forbes talking about this? Somebody tweeted this out the other day over there on the Twitter, and they with that with the headline here as a question on 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 the tweet, and my answer was simply without a doubt. The question is, could hemp be the next big thing in sustainable cotton, fuel, wood, and plastic? And yes, without a doubt, not only could it be, but it shall be. It will be. There is no doubt in my mind that hemp will be monster. And if you have an opportunity out there to get into the, the hemp field some way or another, you're looking at a good place to be. Uh, hemp, hemp is going to be huge. Uh, which it should have been all along if it weren't for the ignorant government stepping in the way and saying hemp was a banned product. <laughs> it's not even a, just a plant, it's a, just a weed that grows out of the ground and they, they banned it. Yes, it makes awesome fuel, it makes awesome plastics, it makes awesome uh, textiles. It, it does, uh, 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 anyway, the article here <laughs> from Forbes.com. Uh, since nations like the United States, United States and Australia have lifted their bans on growing hemp, a revolution is a brewing. Innovators are taking up the gauntlet to cultivate this versatile plant for a medley of biodegradable materials, including plastic polymers, uh, building pro building products. That's right, you can make concrete out of it, or a, a product, hempcrete. Uh, fabrics, wood, biofuel, paper, and even car components. You can build an entire car out of hemp. Henry Ford did it back in the early 1900s. It's not new. The fiber from industrial hemp, cannabis sativa, from the same species as its cousin, marijuana, but without the mind-altering THC, has been used for thousands of years to make paper, rope, cloth, and uh, fuel. Yes, all that great stuff. Although still used in China and Europe, hemp went out of fashion by and large as it was outlawed and replaced by plastic here. What, what, they, what they mean is petrochemical plastic because you could make great plastic out of the hemp. Cotton, fossil fuels, and other... not The uh, fossil fuels, by the way, as I've mentioned a million times, not actually fossil fuels <laughs> and and other profitable products but as their damage to the earth has reached crisis proportions the race to produce sustainable alternatives is on hemp is a weed it's a weed it's a plant so it grows prolifically with very little water, no pesticides, it takes up relatively little space, produces more pulp per acre than trees, oh yeah, like a hundred times more, and is bio-freaking degradable, which your petrochemical stuff is not. Hemp crops even give back by returning nutrients to the soil. Huh. Imagine that. What is, what is, what, what do the petrochemicals return to the soil? Poisons! <laughs> and sequestering carbon dioxide. Yes, it'll suck up that CO2 like nothing else. Virtually every part of the plant can be used. The stock's fiber, uh, the stock's outer bast fiber, can make textiles, canvas, and rope while it's on its woody core, the herd, which is used for paper construction and animal bedding. Not to be overlooked are the seeds which are high in protein, fiber, omega-3 fats, and other nutrients. Their oil can be used for paints, adhesives, cooking, and plastics. Even the leaves can be eaten and used to make juice. Morris Beagle, co-founder and president of the WAFBA, We Are For Better Alternatives, is what that stands for, is a staunch advocate of the industrial hemp. As am I, of course, you could tell. <laughs> He's passionate about replacing unsustainable agricultural practices. Industrial agriculture is one of the greatest drivers, maybe even the biggest driver, of climate change, he says. Oh, 
you lost me there a little bit, buddy. Uh, but that's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll let that one slip by since you're uh, uh, pimping for the hemp here. <laughs> hemp is more sustainable, more organic, and more regenerative agricultural crop. And most everything that you can make with cotton or soy or corn can be made with hemp with way less impact on the earth. Beagle set up his hemp company in 2012, then launched the NOCO Hemp, hemp Expo, which has grown to be the largest in the world. With a merchandising company called Tree Free Hemp, Beagle produces a vast array of custom products, including paper, business cards, flyers, posters, CD and DVD sleeves, and more. Uh, drawing from his background in the music industry, he even produces boutique custom-made guitars using hemp for the body, straps, picks, and volume knobs. It's kind of a novelty thing, he says, but at the same time, it's an educational piece using the whole array of tools to show that, hey, hemp can do all of these things. <laughs> all right, well, I'll let you go on and read the rest for yourself if you're interested, but just know, just know, Hemp is freaking awesome. Weed juice, sure, yeah, why not? Very healthy stuff, uh, and 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 uh, w with that, it, it's it doesn't even have to get you high. It doesn't have to. It could, if you use a slight variation on the hemp, <laughs> but it doesn't have to. Oh man! All right, <laughs> we're gonna play some more music here. We'll come back and do some more stories. Who knows? Maybe maybe the moose will jump on in. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, let's see what kind of thing we got going on here. All right, all right, all right. Uh, yeah, I, think we, I think we got this covered. Okay. Uh, too bad, Cowboy Tech. You know, business, business comes when business comes. Ain't too much you can do about that. So uh, this, this uh, song was just posted yesterday over here on the YouTubes from the new album by Disturbed called Evolution, which is out now, actually. And, and I suggest strongly... Yes, Don, we just talked about that here. He says it's now legal to grow hemp in Texas. We just talked about that. Oh, a couple articles up. Um, hey, there's the moose. All right. Anyway, so this, uh, this song was just released on the YouTubes yesterday. I suggest strongly that you listen to the lyrics of this song, this new song by Disturbed, if you are, as any logical person is, anti-war. And I, I highly applaud the band Disturbed for putting out this particular video and song. I think it's awesome, and hopefully you enjoy it. It's called No More. <laughs> Yes, how fortunate for governments that their people do not think. Thanks for that, um, Adolf. <laughs> That's Billy Blaze, friend of the show, friend of Real Liberty Media, and friend of mine. Mister. I, although I haven't seen him for a good ten years, uh, I like Billy. He's, he's a good guy, man. There ain't no question about that. So that song is called Think by Billy Blaze. There's, there's other Billy Blaze songs up there on the YouTube Look for them and make sure you get the right Billy Blaze, because he's not the only one. All right, before that, Lemmy and the boys from Motorhead covering the Sex Pistols. God save the Queen. Rest in peace, Mr. Lemmy. And we kicked it off there with Disturbed, a brand new one from then, called No More. I will be including that video, the, the No More video, there in the uh, podcast, pod blog blog, blogcaster, whatever you want to call it, the video and the lyrics to that song will be in the in the pod, uh, the blog post uh, of this show tomorrow, so look for, look for those uh, tomorrow on that, and, um, uh, what was I saying, oh yeah, Moose Girl may be calling in, it's, it's a possibility, she's there in the chat now, so, uh, yeah, yeah, there's a good chance that she will be calling in. And uh, I, for one, hope she does. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I always like it better when the moose is here with us because uh, she's cool. I dig the moose girl. She's awesome. Awesome sauce. Oh, by the way, that Billy Blaze uh, tune was requested by Cowboy Tech, who had to leave just as I started that last set. You know, it's 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 weird uh, uh, how many how, how often I'll I'll put a somebody's request into the the next music set, and for whatever reason during that you know before they know that that song is coming up, their song is coming up, they have to bail on the show uh, for uh, you know various reasons. Our log. Vinny, Vinny likes to call the the the, the blogs our logs, which uh, is radio log apparently. Um, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I hear a, I, I hear a phone call. I hear a phone call. I'm answering a phone call. And I'm waiting for the thing. There it is. And hello. hello. Hola. Hola. Miss Moose. It's me. It is you. Oh, it is. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make it, but I'm here. Well, and, and you see, and that... <laughs> Let me see if I can read the, read the message that I was left here. All right. Can someone please let Grimnir know that I might not be available to take his ball? And I'm like, what the, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> right, I might not be. Like, it's not definitive. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. It's like, shit happens. Life happens. You know, I was having a garage sale today, and I just, I had to go out and have a couple beers after to de-stress. Yeah. You know, not yeah. that it was totally stressful, but just getting it set up and everything, getting right. the signs put up and just getting the signs pounded in, hoping that they stay up and don't get knocked down by the wind, you know. Well, let's hope. Yeah, I mean, but good thing for me, there's like a zillion garage sales going on in my neighborhood this weekend. So like every like every other house is having a garage sale. And, and that's <laughs> good? Is, that's I mean, good? That's good? It is good because then they're all, all the garage sale people are congregated in one area. You know, and they'll they'll check out all of them. Oh. Like they go to house to house okay. to house. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess you would all have unique items, right? Right. Oh yeah. You know, every you never know what you're gonna find. Right. You never know. You never know. That's like cool. I sold my this carpet cleaner that I had. Uh huh. It's been sitting in my porch for like four years because I've had I took all my carpet out pretty much. Right. Except okay. For the one room, which is the boys' room. <laughs> but I don't need a goddamn carpet cleaner Garage sale anymore cart. <laughs> because I have laminate floor, so I do not need a carpet cleaner. Right. So I put twenty bucks on it, right? So wait, I, well, it's literally only been used like three times, right? So what do you use, like a but Swiffer? It's a carpet cleaner. No, I know, I know, but what do you use? You use a Swiffer? Oh well, yeah, you can use a Swiffer or a broom, just or a mop. Yeah, but I said, what do you use? I use uh, my hands. Oh. I get on my hands and knees and I can with wipe a, it out. With a rag or what? Well, yeah, but usually the sweeping is good enough, you know. Okay. So. Cool. cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, hey, Flasher. Uh, what? Flash, Flash is joined here. Oh, I see that. Hey, Flash. Yeah. Yeah, garage sale cult. I mean, some people are really hardcore about garage sales, dude. They're, like, totally fucking... Hardcore. They're like in, having coffee at seven. They're hitting the garage sale at eight. You know what I mean? Because you know, in those people's mind, the early bird gets the worm. But in my case, I like to sleep in on the weekend, whatever. So when I hit the garage sale, it's like three or f between three and five. When they're like shutting down, they're ready to get rid of shit. They're like, oh yeah, I just had that for half price. Like I found really good shit well, showing up late to garage sales. Uh, the the only time I've been shopping yeah. for worms is if I was gonna go trap fishing. <laughs> worms? Where'd you get that? You. I didn't say worms. Yeah, you did. What? It, what? You said early the bird gets the worm. <laughs> yeah. Like the early girl, that's what they think. But oh, I know. <laughs> the late bird also just... can get good deals. I'll do that. Like, I'm just, for the stuff that didn't sell all through the day, and I show up there at 3, they're like, oh, yeah, we want that to go. We'll give you that for half price. I'm like, 
Fuck yeah. 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 Fuck yeah. Right. We're just getting rid of it. We don't want to take it back inside. Right. Like the carpet cleaner. Like I said, I was just so glad to have it gone and not taking up space in my house. And it was actually in the porch, you know. It's like I have the whole porch corner cleared out now. Yeah. Like, it's so cool to get rid of shit. Like, this guy, I put 20 bucks on it. And um, he comes up. He's like, oh, I don't know about my wife. She's really picky. I don't know if she's going to like this. I'm like, I've only used it three times, dude. You know, right. I'm like, it's good. He's like, are you sure it works? I'm like, yes, I've only used it three times. And when I did use it, it worked. So mm-hmm. I had 20 on there. He's like, will you take 15? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> I mean, seriously, he could have probably paid me 15 just for him to take it, you know, but I didn't say that. You know, you know, you don't say that when you're trying to make money. Right, right, right. But when he left with it, when he was rolling it down my driveway, I was just like, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, you know, because like, <laughs> I needed I needed it done, and I made fifteen bucks. You know, it's like cool, you know. Right. So yeah, but some people are really cheap skates. Like they're, I can pick them out usually. Like, I mean, the one the, the one lady, like she was only looking for vases, right? Okay. And I had a couple vases, you know, just generic ones, you know, but one was like thicker glass. I'm like, oh, a dollar for that. She's like, oh, you take fifty cents. I'm like, yeah. And then a friend put some stuff in my sale, too, and he had those, like, blue mason jars, you know? Uh-huh. And those are going for big money now because it's, it's the blue gra- glass and they're old. She tried to jew me down on those. I'm like, no, dude. Because they were marked at a dollar a piece, which is actually a really good deal. Yeah. And I'm like, lady, you're a fucking bitch because you're trying to talk me down on something that's priced appropriately. Because right. you get these people that they'll come to a garage and they'll be like, whatever they they have in the price tag, I'm going to offer less. Half. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, fuck you, you cheap fucking skate. And there's some people where like, I owe them $40 and change, or 40 cents, I mean not $40, $0.40 in change. Right. You know, because it was like five forty or something. Or I owe, so I owe them $0.60 cents and change. They're like, oh, just keep it. Those are the non-cheap skates. The yeah. cheapskates are the ones that, like, do you down and try to get a fucking scam. You know, you get all kinds of people <laughs> with these garage sales, but those fucking Jew downers and those fucking... Hey, no, that's, that's, that, 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 is, that thing is racist. Oh. I'm sorry, it is a racist <laughs> statement, but, you know, I'm sorry. It's, I grew up in the 70s. That was a phrase. I know. They do you down. <laughs> they, you know, I couldn't say nigger you down, but no no one would like that. No, they certainly would not. No, you know, <laughs> fuck the Jews. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. But, you know, you know, and so somehow, like, when I first heard the word, like, nigger rig. Yeah. yeah. I They said jury rig. Jury rig, yeah. It's like, okay. So a nigger rig, I do not say that word. Like, I just say it now, just now I say it. <laughs> but I don't mean it. It's not like a derogatory term. I I'm just describing how I, I it just, was. I'm just that. giving you a hard time. <laughs> but also, no, Grim, I remember I was at Blue Ox <coughs> a couple weeks ago, right? Mm-hmm. You know how you go around the campfire, you sit, and everyone just talks and commiserates and everything, you know? Right. And so I was commiserating with my neighbors, my campy neighbors, <coughs> and they were talking about racism and shit. And I'm like, you know what? You know what my observation is? The people have gotten too goddamn sensitive. Oh, definitely. About this goddamn race shit. I'm like, <laughs> hello, I grew up watching Archie Bunker. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Archie Bunker was the racist, most racist fucking show out there at the time. But back then, no one thought it was racist. No, it was just funny. It was funny. It was, it was funny. But now, all these fucking snowflakes, they're like, oh, that's incessant. It's like, fuck it. Everybody has a goddamn race. My kids thought, they called me, they, they, they accused me of being racist one time because I'm like, oh, you mean that Asian kid? I'm like, they're like, that's racist. I'm like, hello? No, it is not racist. Is it if someone's obviously Asian... It's okay if I say they're Asian. That doesn't mean I'm fucking racist. That means right. I'm observant. Right. That right. means I can tell they're fucking Asian. Which is if I look at a black person, I can tell they're fucking African American. It, it's pretty if easy to tell. If I look at tell, a white yeah. person, I can tell they're probably from fucking Eastern Europe. Yes, the Jeffersons was racist as well. It's like right. 
But to and, fucking and sit there and tell me I'm racist for pointing out a race of a person, that and, is over the top. And, and Like and, I told my kids, I said, just because I point out the race of somebody does not mean I'm a racist. I'm just saying the obvious. I say, that Asian kid, that and, black kid, that well, white kid. <laughs> I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? Moose. Oh, this racist mob. Moose. No, it is not. Moose. Moose. Go ahead. Our resident token Jew <laughs> says, says that Jewing you down is an art form. <laughs> that what? Jewing you down is an art form. I, I believe that. <laughs> so it is an actual term. That wasn't not. That is not a racist statement. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't know because about that. Because he's pointing out the fact that that the Jews actually do that. Of course. So it's an art form. Well, a lot, a lot of various people. Well, everyone do does that. Yeah. If you can do it, you're gonna fucking do it. I don't Generally. care what the fuck race you are. You could be fucking a Martian from goddamn outer space. I don't give a fuck. Fucking a Martian? No, that sounds all right. Yeah, you know, hey, that might but be something. Some of them, it might be some better. Of, it might be better. I mean, so, you know, has so, anyone ever fucked a Martian? Some of them green Martian girls with big tits. I saw, I saw them. I saw them on some movie. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. we. My point is, is society as a whole has gotten way too sensitive. Oh, how dare you say a person is Asian? Why? Because they're well, from look, Korea. Yeah, I, th okay, I think I they think, are Asian. Wait, like, no. that's not an insult. I think that is just pointing out Moose, Moose, a fact. I mean, come Moose, on. Moose, I, I think saying Asian is okay, but you're not allowed to call them Oriental. Well, I don't use that term anyway. I call well, them Asian or L Hmong. Like, we have a Hmong See, population I, I, but, here in, yeah. this, in this city. I, and I, they I, don't I, mind being called Hmong. <laughs> Guess why? Because that's what they're called. That's what they are. They're fucking Hmong. See, I, I didn't know that. The it's back, not a racist term to say, oh, that Hmong person. No. No, because they're Hmong. Right. But I didn't know back in the day, or I don't even know when it happened, but uh, sometime in the 90s, I think. And and I had this friend. He was he was uh, um, from Hawaii. But, okay. But he was a Japanese... Uh, Right, so descent. Asian, right. Asian descent, and, and and I said Oriental at some point. Oh yeah, that's not. They and don't and like he, that he got all offended. He, like he says, he said, I ain't Oriental. Do I look like a rug? <laughs> that's like, kind of like nigger to them. That's kind of like nigger. You know what I mean? It's a derogatory term. I just that. thought Oriental because they're from the Orient. Right, but that that was a Eastern or Western made up word. You know what I mean? The Orient. Yeah, Oriental. Because they're from the Orient, which is... That's but that's... Um, I, I, I believe that was probably, like, a, made, a white man's term for... Oh, sure, sure. Eastern, you know what I mean? Yeah, Just yeah. like, you know, whatever, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> there we go. Going off down side roads when all you're doing is talking about your uh, your uh, garage sale stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> how we get on these tangents, I do not know. Like... It just goes down the road and keeps going. It's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> the great case that she uh, high school she attended. The mascot was Chinks. The, oh my the, god, the chinks. that would not be acceptable <laughs> now. Peeking down into the Peking dragons instead of the Chinks. Oh, I do god. have a story though. Like, well, you know, you got you still that, got you still got the Washington Redskins out there. And, right, uh, even though they don't like that either. Uh, did, did did the Cleveland Indians ever get rid of Chief Wahoo? Uh, supposedly, but they'll never get rid of him because he's yeah. been like the mascot since like the beginning of the team in the 1950s. Yeah, yeah, you know, he, he just looks like. Can't get rid of him. It looks, it looks you know? like a, a happy drunk Indian. Right, <laughs> and so here's a story that I saved. This is weird. Now this is weird. I thought it was weird. Rare tick spotted in northern Wisconsin. Its bite can make you allergic to meat. Oh, that would be horrible. Yeah, and so uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, this is from uh, June 26, 2019. Um, a type of tick that is uncommon in this part of the country has been spotted in northern Wisconsin near Eau Claire County. Okay. According, according to Professor Susan Paskowitz, Chief of Entomology Department at University of Wisconsin-Madison, the Lone Star Tick is not indigenous to Wisconsin, Rather, the bug will hitch a ride up north each year by attacking, attaching itself to a bird or another animal. She said, uh, June and July are the most common months for tick bites. Um, but anyway, 
This is a weird one because it makes you be allergic to meat. It's like, what the hell? It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. But anyway, I am like, luckily for me, ticks don't like me generally. Mosquitoes love me, but ticks don't. Right. And then you got these people. Okay, the rainbow gathering is going up in northern Wisconsin, right? Right. Rainbow gathering. Right. Which is all these hippy dippy fucking hippies, you know. But anyway, um, they're all worried about ticks. You know, I lived up in northern Wisconsin for ten years. Okay. You know, and I never, I don't have Lyme disease. Unfortunately, the boy's dad does. Oh really? Um, Lyme disease is a real thing. Yes, but it is. luckily for me, chicks don't like me. And so all these people are compl- like on the Facebook page, like the re- Facebook Rainbow Gallery has like a page. Yeah. And all these people are concerned about fucking tick bites. It's like, dude, for one thing, don't think that you can go up to the North Woods, Northern Wisconsin, in the middle of fucking summer, and walk around naked. Okay? Well, you can, but, you know. Well, you can, <laughs> but you would be dumb. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't care how hard you're tripping. Walking around naked, especially at night or whenever in the North Woods, it's just dumb. Right. Especially if you're worried about ticks. It's sure. like, okay, people. So I responded to one person's thing about ticks. You know, I'm like, people, wear fucking clothes so you can prevent ticks from landing on you. You can't go up there and expect to run around the goddamn woods <coughs> naked and not get bit by bucks. So if you want to run around fucking naked, I would suggest going somewhere else to do it. Not in the goddamn north fucking woods of Wisconsin. Okay. Right. Oh, I, I, I'm tripping. I want to run around naked. What the fuck ever. You're stupid. Okay. Enjoy your Lyme disease. Right. You know, come on. Yeah, you know, Lyme disease, mosquito yeah, people bites. People are freaking uh... out about fucking ticks up there. It's like... Chillax, motherfuckers. Well, is this their first oh. time up there? It must be. Mine? No, it's not my first time. No, I lived up in the North no, no, I lived that, in Hayward for ten fucking years. It was the dude. first time for that festival up there. No. Oh, no. It's been in Wisconsin before. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, they so they, they travel know. around the country going to different national forests. Right. This right. time it happens to me in Wisconsin. Okay. So they should know yeah. if they've been there before. Well, yeah. You know, and, and I'm sorry, but you get these young little 18 year old fucking flight fuckers, flighty fuckers. Oh, I want to run like a want to run like a nymph in the woods, naked or with barely any clothes on. It's like, go for it, dumbass. That's stupid. <laughs> and it's a stupid move to do in the fucking north woods of Wisconsin. I don't oh, give a fuck how free you want to be. You're fucking put your own goddamn life at risk. And if you run around naked. Don't come back to me in a couple of days and complain that you got bit by ticks or mosquitoes. Right. Put some motherfucking clothes on. Yeah. You know, put some, uh, yeah. You want to be, oh, I got a good body, I'm young, and I'm tripping, and I want to be naked. Like, okay, great, but that's stupid. Stupid move. Yes. Yes, yeah, very. Stupid move. Worried about ticks. Wants to run around naked. Uh put some long pants on. But that doesn't look sexy. No, but it's smart. <laughs> smart, top, sexy. I'm sorry, but I don't give a fuck. Smart, top, sexy. Yeah. Okay? Like in Wisconsin, in the winter, winter boots are fashionable. All right? If you wear flip-flops in the middle of winter in Wisconsin, people are going to think you're a fucking dumbass. Okay? Pretty much. Right. So, it, basically, it comes out of common fucking sense. Right. So, even though it's rare ticket spot in Wisconsin, I'm not going to be like, oh, no, I can't go in the woods any longer. You know, I'll be like, okay, there's ticks out there. That means wear long pants, use some lemon eucalyptus fucking bug spray, and about you're good. Right, you know? right. And don't think you can run around naked. For one thing, I don't want to put bug spray all over my body. You know, I only want to put it on certain parts of my body. You know? Right. People are dumb. People think that the 60s hippie generation still exists. 
Okay, it it's done. Okay, it's changed now. Yeah. The reason it's changed because of goddamn feds. All right. Sure. So, yeah, the hippie hippie movement's alive and well, but it's not the same as it was. No, no, it's not. No, it's, it's they, is these, not. These, these hippies are not. They're not. Are not our generation hippies. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're the next generation of hippie. And they're, and they're just they're just wrong. They're just. And if you think that it's fucking the same as the sixties now, you're wrong. Because it's not. You might want it to be the same, but it's not. Now, now this here, I don't, I don't know if um, it doesn't specifically mention ticks, but maybe, maybe. I mean, it does so many other things. We could find out. Okay. Uh, on on LiveScience.com here. Okay. It says, could CBD fight superbugs? Sure, you bet. Uh, marijuana compound shows promise as an antibiotic, which that's a new use for it. Uh, anyway, it says, for the quest for uh, new antibiotics has led researchers to a surprising candidate, the marijuana compound CBD. The new study finds that CBD, or however you say that, is remarkable, remarkably effective at killing bacteria, at least in a test tube. Uh, the research researchers in the new study said uh, the results show that CBD has ant antibiotic effects against a number of so-called gram-positive bacteria, including types of staph and strep bacteria, as well as strains that had become resistant to other antibiotic drugs. Uh, still, the result is uh, very preliminary, and people should not ab absolutely not self-treat infections. Yeah, go ahead, I'd say. Go ahead and self-treat. Uh, with CBD at this time, according to the researchers. No, I'm saying go ahead, self-treat. Um, it's, it needs a lot more work to show that CBD would be useful. Well, if people are self-treating, that will be a lot more work, won't it? Um, yep. to, to treat infections in humans, uh, said the study leader, Mark Black, Black or whatever, um, the University of Queensland Institute for Molecular Bioscience Center for Superbug Solutions in Brisbane, Australia. It would be very dangerous to try and treat a serious infection with CBD, instead of the ones of the tried and tested antibiotics, I, I say no. Because I'm sure, according to this guy, you can't use anything that's uh, not turned into a drug prior to using it. So, uh, anyway, so the study was conducted in collaboration with Botanics Pharmaceuticals, a drug discovery company that's investigating the uses of synthetic CBD synthetic CBD. That's what they want right, to use. Right, which is bad. For a range of skin conditions, which I'm pretty sure Lyme disease would qualify under that. Um, anyway, so uh, it, it, it's, it, it goes on talking about how, how you know, you, you want to, that, that there's promise for this under their way of looking at it, but under my way of looking at it, use it. Just use it. And if, and if, you, if you need an antibiotic, or an antiviral, antibacterial, um, CBD. Check it out. Use it. You know, it it does does fucking everything. So, um. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, okay. The brain has cannabinoid receptors in it. So what you're doing when you use CBD, whether it's THC content or not, it's stimulating your cannabinoid receptors. In your brain, and that I believe can fight things like Alzheimer's and dementia, yeah, and yeah. cancer. But they they want to be. I able believe that pot helps keep people safe from cancer. They they want to. They that it builds your immune system. They they want to be able to synthesize it and sell it to you for high dollar prices. Exactly, which is which is what. You know, we've talked about this before, the difference between legalization and decriminalization. Right. And, you know, this whole fine line and this whole legal mumbo-jumbo, you know, but it's like once it's, if it's considered legalized, but you know what, even if they legalize it, like in Illinois, like they just did or whatever, uh, people are still going to, the black market's still going to exist for weed. Oh, absolutely, because... I mean, they've you know. never gotten rid of that. I mean, even in Wisconsin... 
People still use and consume weed here, even though it's quote unquote illegal. Right. People still grow it. They still smoke it. They still, you know, it, it, the, you know, like Cirque brought up a point. Like I told her, no, the black market will still exist. Like yeah. in her mind, she's probably thinking, oh, once they legalize weed, then it's going to be like communism, you know, and weed, you know, where you have to get it from a certain. But that's not going to be the case because weed grows so easily and readily. Anybody can fucking grow it. As far as as far as I'm concerned, if we recreational weed is legalized, quote unquote, in any state, then anybody should be able to grow their own. Yeah. You know, but that's that's a, so when you you bring the word legal into it, they'll be like, yes, it's legal this way and that way, but no goddamn way are you gonna grow your own. Right. It's like people are gonna be like, fuck you, I'm growing my fucking own, bitch. You know, just like I have been before it was legal. You know what I mean? Right, right. But now you can't bust me as hard maybe for it. But maybe you can because you'd be like, well, you didn't get go through a dispensary and you, this wasn't approved weed. Like, fuck that shit. <laughs> fuck that shit. Yeah, yeah, you're it's right. It's fucking weed. Yeah. Why make it complicated? It's a goddamn plant that has medicinal properties. So... That should be all that needs to be said about it. You know? Christ. Oh, well, it makes people feel good and helps them so it can't be legal. Yeah. What the fuck ever, bastards. Fuck you. Yeah, free market, man. It should be free market, but it has to be black market because they have all these regulations and shit. You know? Fuck their regulations. Fuck you. It's a goddamn plant. Yeah. Oh, there it is. You know? Cool. Christ's sake, people. Cool. Vinny, Vinny, Vinny. Uh, why is it so fucking weird? Vinny's show from today, his Ponder Gander show from today, yeah. is, is included in It Matters How You Stand's daily paper. You know how uh, Real Liberty Media puts out a daily paper? Yep. Yep, yep. yep. So they, he got into theirs. Nice. Good yeah, job, Vinny. Yep. Way All to go, right, my Vinny. brother. All right, so let's hear some music. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do it. So this first song is a Mr. Benoit. Ooh, a Benoit. Hopefully it's not one of those impressing, like, want to slit your wrist songs. It could be. <laughs> These guys do look a, a little bit on the depressive side. Because <laughs> he does like those depressing songs. Like, I want is he even in the chat room anymore? Yeah, he, well, oh. I, don't, I don't know. He was He's there He's not earlier. even here now. Well, whatever. Are we sure? I don't see him in there. All right, no. Ben, get your ass back in the chat room. Yeah, Ben, motherfucker. If you're you out there. before you play your song, and then he'll come back and be like, you never play my request. Yeah, because <laughs> you leave before we play them. You leave before we play them. Yeah. All right. Anyway, All right. Here we, here. enjoy, people. Here we go. Enjoy. This is, uh, I'll, ben. I'll text him. I'll tell him we're playing your request. This, this is a band called Veruca yeah. Salt. Oh, God. This is going to be depressing. Hopefully this is good. All right. They they look depressed. I don't, I don't know. One guy's smiling kind of halfway. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh yeah, nice stuff there. Gang band, rockabilly band, covering uh, Motorhead's Ace of uh, Spades. Uh, all right, before that we had Leo Maraccioli covering The Animals, The House of the Rising Sun, and we kicked it off there with a request for Benoit, the Veruca Salt with a Cedar. How old is that vid? You're going to have to ask, t tell me what vid you're talking about. Uh, there, Miss Amoose Girl. If you mean the gang band Rockabilly, that is a 2014 uh, video. Um, I just found gang band Rockabilly a couple weeks ago, and I think I played a track last week from them, and there was another one. Uh, but they did a, they do a very nice uh, Led Zeppelin medley uh, thing there. So, uh, are you there, Moose? I, I don't know if she's there. I see her talking in the chat. I am here. There she is. So which song are you, are you asking about the gang band Rockabilly? Oh, I love the Rockabilly. Yeah, how old is that, Vince? Yeah, 2014. Okay, so five years old. 
Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, the band is called the band. The band. Really good. The band is called Gang Band Rockabilly. I like it. They're really good. Yeah. Yeah. I like Rockabilly. Yeah, I, was, uh, I just found those guys a couple weeks ago, but apparently they're they're not a brand new band and. Uh, yeah, and they, they they do like a, a big band rockabilly. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's a good song. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Good so stuff. I'm not sure what to talk about now. What do you got? Oh, I got all kinds of stuff lined up. But oh, I'm sure you do. Oh yeah, I always do. I always do. I got. I got. And I you got, always do. I got. I got so much tech stuff lined up, man. Let me tell you. Oh my God, that tech stuff! Oh my God, no, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Oh, uh, I can I, handle it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, Hansel, um, I'm not playing your. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not playing your uh, Bon Jovi. I did play a Bon Jovi song at the Yeah, of- you know, he requests songs just like a fucking challenge, just to see if we'll actually play them. Uh, like I'm sure that he knows in his mind that when he requests these little songs, that we're not going to play them. Like, well, I, I did. I did. I did play a a, a Bon Jovi song at the top of the show. Oh, okay. Oh, well, good. There oh, you go. Only it wasn't Bon Jovi. It was it was Leo. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> a cover of a Bon. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, it was it was a metal metal version of right. what I don't I don't know what you consider Bon Jovi. They're they're not metal. By by no, any, they're by, classic bubblegum rock or whatever. Oh, by by any stretch, but Leo makes them sound better. So. Like so, I go to this garage sale because I'm in the cities last Sunday, right? Yeah. And I go to this garage sale, and they have these albums, vinyl record albums, right? Right. I'm like, they got the Go-Go's. I'm like, no, fucking wait. The Go-Go's. The Go-Go's. Okay. Like, we got the beat. Okay. The album. This is my first concert ever, right? The Go-Go's. Oh, okay. And so I open up the album, and I take it out, and it's like brand new. Oh. They wanted 10 for it, right? All right. I said, will you take eight? He's like, no. He's like, did you look at the album? I'm like, yeah. He's like, it's like brand new. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You know. So I paid the ten. But it's like my album. It's like my album. Like, I. Hello? Did you mute? Hello? 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 Did you mute? Hello, hello, hello. Am I still here? Yes, I did mute. So okay. sorry, but I was just saying it's one of those deals that you just can't pass up. Like you're like, I have to have this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> anyway, I don't know what you missed. What if how much of that story you missed, but whatever. Not much. Okay, cool. But yeah, I'm a junkie and then so I'm now trying to have my own garage sale, you know, and it's just like weird to be on the other side of it, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I got rid of that carpet cleaner. I had 20 on it. Guy said, will you take 15? I'm like, yeah. You know, he could have probably paid me 15 to take it away. <laughs> or I could have paid him 15 probably to take it right. away. Right, no, yeah, he means that. Get it off my slate, you know. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. But he paid me 15 and took it all to my driveway, all of my slate. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> so, and I just like it because you, you get really weird people. Like you get some really usually the people are really cool, but you get some really weird weird people at garage sales. Oh sure. Like I put the junk stuff in like the three pile. Yeah. You know, you put it at the very beginning of the sale. You put us. You, you're right in there, free. People rummage through that shit. Sure. They're like free. What could I? I yeah. I've done it. Yeah, at, just at take, garage sale. I'm like, oh, I'm checking out the free box. You know, you never know. Just take you the whole box. Know. Just get it. Take it out of here. No, seriously, I have found cool shit in the free box. Yeah. I'm not kidding you, you know? Right. But, okay. Um, so the, me... the free box is always popular. What? Oh, sure. I'm sure it is. So yeah, you, uh, yeah, yeah. do you ever go on to the interwebs there and search for natural health websites? Yes. And look for natural cures and things like that? Yeah, sure. Well, no, not, you're not... Is the problem? You're not going to be doing that via Google any longer. Uh oh. What do they do now? Breaking news Google just scrubbed natural health websites from its search results. Well, fuck them. 
not cool. From its search results, Whistleblower explains how and why. This is posted on greenmedinfo.com. Top of things says, censorship is real. You can make a difference by sharing this on social media and forwarding it via email. Well, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to put it in my blog post and I'm sharing it on the show. Hopefully that's good enough. Right. <laughs> okay. Earlier this month, in one devastating algorithmic stroke, Google removed a many of the top natural health and health freedom websites of course they did. from their... I or, heard uh, from, the from, guy from Natural News talking about this. Mike, from, whatever. Yeah, Mike Adams. Yep, yeah. yep. He from, was talking about it. It says from, from their organic search results. Yeah. Some sites... Suck. Some sites losing as much as 99% of their traffic. In, the, in fact, the term organic should never, ever again be used to describe Google's referral traffic. <laughs> right. As a, as a jaw-dropping undercover investigation by Project Veritas reveals, Google surreptitiously manipulates its search results and auto-suggestions to conform right. to a very specific set of socio-political and economic agendas right. intended, intended, uh, more than intending, to manipulate you, to manipulate, of course. to, <laughs> so, uh, mani manipulate elections and promote private interests. You're not interest. supposed to think for yourself, remember, Graham? Oh, absolutely not. You're not um, supposed to think for yourself anymore. You're supposed to let the Internet do it for you. Well, not just the Internet, but certain companies on the Internet. Right, yeah. Let yeah. Google think for you. It says, we live in amazing times, albeit intense, filled with incredible darkness and light. But thanks to the power of the Internet, we have a level of freedom of information never enjoyed before by any previous generations on Earth, which is absolutely true. And that right, information right. is the very life's blood of, it says here, democratic ideals, but we'll just say free people's ideals. And the necessary ingredient for informed consent and health, freedom, and pri our, our primary advocacies. But what Don't believe what they say. But what happens when the gatekeepers of the content that, that uh, flows through this incredible invention, like Facebook and Pinterest, censor and shadow ban certain of its users or content or their ability to send you messages via email service providers like MailChimp, which has been recently exposed and experienced also by this Greed Mad Info site. Where do we go for information then? Well, I'll tell you right now, duck, duck, go for one. Um, but anyway, uh, and you don't use their, their mail services because they're horrible anyway. Says why not skip the social media filtering and email platform censorship, and go back to using Google? You might ask, aren't they the very archetype of modern day oracle of fairness? <laughs> Having become synonymous with looking for and finding objective answers, after all, wouldn't you expect that if you typed in turmeric research? Green Med Info would come up on the first page, given that we have the world's largest open access resource to the, uh, on the topic, which curates over 2,700 peer-reviewed studies relevant to over 800 diseases on the topic. Whereas a few years ago, our search traffic was growing, today it's as if we no longer exist on the Internet. See that, Vin A.? Uh, he's heading out to a party. See you, man. Have a good one. Instead, today, uh, you, you find the first page of Google results on turmeric, like, turmeric may not be a miracle spice after all, which is all we all know is a huge lie, uh, from time.com, or turmeric uses, side effects, interactions, dosages, and warnings from WebMD, another horrible site, which overlook much of the research we have gathered and make turmeric sound like it's just another drug uh, that you have to be very very careful to take. Apparently, right. this is entirely by design. On June 3rd, in fact, Google rolled out its latest core algorithm change, which obliterated the organic search results for the majority of top sites in natural health 
and health freedom advocating for the sector of the Internet. Sites like DrAxe.com, Kelly Brogan, MD, Dot com uh, stats that depicted the image below, and naturalnews.com, which saw most of their traffic removed overnight. And they have a, a, a graph here showing it just dropping from like 225 impression, 225,000 impressions today per day to nearly zero. Uh, Mercola.com, perhaps the most heavily hit of all, uh, broke. I love Mercola.com, by the way. Uh, broke the story in its two-part report. Google buries Mercola in their latest search engine update. Uh, Mercola.com has been a source of the whistleblowing information about Big Pharma and Big, t big Tech collusion for decades. So it's no surprise why Google would take this action against his platform and similar ones. In fact, signs of the coming purge came back in 2016 with GlaxoSmithKline signed a $715 million contract to partner with Google. Imagine that. With increasing, Imagine that. With increasing partnerships in pharmaceutical companies in 2019, like Sanofi, Google parent company Alphabet is heavily interested, invested in vaccine company Vaxitech. Imagine that. Founded by scientists at Oxford University, Google, it appears, has become a pay-to-play operation and contains specific socio-political and economic agenda that is built directly into its search algorithms. And they talk about Google or GlaxoSmithKline here. Uh, videos, uh, they show this video no longer exists. Um, and they get the Project Veritas th uh, thing that came out earlier this week, which is huge. Um, and it shows that uh, Project Veritas has been removed from all kinds of various uh, search engines and uh, uh, social media platforms, video sharing platforms, uh, blogging platforms. They just wiped them out. Um, okay, uh, down further in here it says, until Google is held accountable for their actions, like that's going to happen, and there is industry reform, uh, like that's going to happen, it will be difficult to get around their full-spectrum dominance, uh, Gmail, Google YouTube, uh, Google Calendar, Google Documents, etc., unless we find a better privacy-secured platforms. And there are quite a few you may not have heard about, including the Internet browser alternatives to Google Chrome, such as Brave, which is the only browser I'm using on my Linux machine at this point in time, and Opera, which I don't really trust too much. Search engines like StartPage and DuckDuckGo uh, unfortunately, Ecosia.com, which is supposedly a free and open source thing, it's not, uses the same Google keywords. And email programs like ProtonMail, which may also have a problem, which I reported about last week. You can also use communication app Signal, uh, which provides a level of encryption that may be best, the best out there. Um, lastly, the, the newsletter is one of the only lifelines this newsletter uh, it says, well, I don't know about that, is one of the only lifelines people will have to receive our content in the future. Well, your website's still out there, so people that uh, regularly visit that, then they're good. Um, and we highly encourage you to share it with others. Uh, and you can sign up, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, then they show here addendum testing the hypothesis that Google is manipulating their results. In order to confirm O'Keefe's accusations again, against Google are correct, and that they are engaged in manipulating search term auto suggestions, I typed into Google vaccines cause to see what the results would retrieve. This is the result. So it shows vac vaccines cause adults, which I don't know what that means. Vaccines cause allergies. Vaccines cause SIDS, uh, ADHD, adults meaning seizures, disease, diabetes, food allergies, and asthma. In order to ascertain uh, which actual, what the actual search volume for a term in question is, we went to another Google product called Google Trends, which allows you to see the volume of what people are searching for over time. So we compared the searches, vaccine cause adults and vaccine cause autism, to see w uh, the profound disparity between the two in favor of the latter. And it's a huge, huge gap there. 
so yeah, you'll notice the autocomplete predictions rather than suggestions. And there's a good reason for that. Autocomplete is designed to help people complete a search they were intending to do, not to suggest new types of searches to be performed. Um, then they uh, put in here, supplements are. And then the, the, what came up is supplements are bad, supplements are useless, supplements are not regulated, supplements are bad for you, dangerous, scams, uh, good for you. So they actually got that one in there. Uh, garbage and not regulated by the FDA. So, <laughs> so these bastards, <laughs> these bastards just trying to form your opinions for you. Um, well, yeah. Which is highly disturbing. Uh, but right. on one, one thing uh, that people can do, people that have um, YouTube accounts, which I have a YouTube right. account. Uh, Real, Real Liberty Media has a YouTube account. Um, the, uh, but I also have BitChute accounts. Right. And BitChute is the platform I would suggest people switch to. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Okay. Uh, we have over 300 videos posted on BitChute now um, of, of various shows from Real Liberty Media. And, and I do them manually now because I, I was... The bit shoot automation yeah. thing was was not working real well. But let's say you've got a website that you've got twenty, thirty, fifty, hundred, several thousand videos on, and you don't want to go through the process, the hassle of moving all of those videos over to bit shoot from YouTube. Well, right. there's, a, there's a brand new site out there, and it's called Ditch YouTube. Um, okay. And, and what this site will do for you at this point in time is um, will it import your entire YouTube channel to BitChute with a single click. So, uh, well, not a single click, but at, at a single shot. Cool, okay. cool. And, and they will also have, uh, they also have uh, coming up pretty soon, uh, the automatic uh, YouTube backups, they call it, which is just basically... Taking a video that so you, you post, you have to put. You got to sign up and register for this, right? Well, you got to sign up for Bitshoot. Yeah, and then well, you would, it's, it's, no, I just clicked on the link you posted, and it's asking me to sign up. Yeah, yeah, but you would also you would sign up for Bitshoot, but you would also sign up for this. You, and the reason for that is you're going to need to give them your YouTube information so that they can right. and and your Bitshoot information so, right. they, so that they can import. So do I have to put my YouTube password in here then? No, no, no. But you'll have to I'll give just them. Make up my own. You'll, you'll have to give them your channel identifier. Yeah, you can put oh, whatever password you want. I don't know what that is. I, I have. Oh, man. What? No. I just like to do it like I have one oh, minute. Oh well, if, it, you know, if you it, it, it'll, it'll explain to you how to get your your okay. your, your okay, I'll just bookmark it then. Your, I mean, your YouTube okay. channel identifier yeah. is really it's just like a series of random numbers that YouTube generates. Uh, yeah, I'll do it later. With, but with I'm gonna bookmark. So later. yeah, no. Anyway, it's it's a great thing. Um, it, like I said, for uh, for uh, uh, you know j switching or right. just duplicating because and right now, like the videos that we post up on YouTube get yep. three, four, five, maybe ten views. Right, which so, is insane because they're they're really good videos and more than ten people would have watched them. And those same videos on a much much smaller site, BitChute, yep. get. Ten There's times like a million views. Yeah, so. Well, they well they get ten times the views. Right, on, right. On a site that's you know. YouTube's going down the tubes. I mean, no pun intended. YouTube's going down. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's it's because uh, you start censoring. You know, these these sites don't get it. Like, Sarah is a great site. All of a sudden, they're like, "Oh, we're gonna start censoring stuff." Well, well, one, one, like, well then fuck you. you one, know? One, once Google bought YouTube, it was it was pretty much right. downhill but, from there. Yeah, me. we we talked about that when that happened. We're like, "Just wait, yeah, YouTube's yeah. gonna go yeah, down the fucking dude. It's gonna yeah, get this, really this is, bad." This now. will not yeah. work out well for anybody. We predicted that. We didn't, I mean, it's not like we're geniuses or we're fortune tellers. No, we can just <laughs> see that happening. It's, it's obvious. The writing was on the fucking wall. You know. Right. Right. So, uh, it's not like we're geniuses, which we are geniuses, but not, you know what I mean. Right, right. Not right. fortune tellers, but we predicted it, and we were correct. Okay. 
Well, here's yeah. here's a here's a, a good little bit of uh, and and something else that we've talked about in different ways uh, here on Freakers Ball before because we know that they listen. Right, we do know that they listen. But just hello this, out there. <laughs> this, this just came out on Tuesday uh, no. on on Business Insider, posted over here on sfgate.com. Uh, Instagram head denies. Widely held belief that Instagram and Facebook listen in through your smartphone. You know they do. <laughs> they deny it. Of course they deny it. Of course they deny what, it. What else? Yeah, what else? They're not going to be like, yes, we do that. So it says there's a widely held belief that Facebook and Instagram listen in on people's smartphones of course and they do. then serve advertisements based upon their speech. Yes, well, not they do. Not only that, but they, but they also sell that information to other people. Yes, they do. Uh, CBS This Morning anchor Gail King is among that group, and nothing the head of Instagram said in an interview could convince her otherwise, because they're lying. Uh, yeah. And I don't know who it's Gail, Gail King is, but whatever. Um, it says, I don't believe you, she said. I, I don't know how this happens repeatedly. Does it happen to you? Of course, yes. it happens to everybody that uses those it sites. I, I don't have a Facebook or an Instagram account You're myself. Lucky. Lucky. Anyway, so Facebook and Instagram representatives have repeatedly denied as much. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so whether you're a famous host of a popular morning news show on CBS or a little-known tinfoil hat aficionado, ding, ding, that's me. Oh, uh, there's a strong possibility <laughs> that you think Facebook and Instagram are listening to you. It's extremely <laughs> persistent. Widely held belief. They do listen. You, they watch you. They listen. They monitor. They get a, they algorithm calculators. They fucking go. Oh, this person clicked on a Jeep ad. So not, not, not even that much. You were yeah. talking to a friend about something. Right. Then an advertisement fuck because they're listening to your fucking conversation. Then an advertisement about that thing pops up hours yeah, later on your. That is fucking freaky though, because that has happened to me. Yeah, you don't have that to. That is be... fucking freaky. Shit, shit, because you're like, you know what? You know what that makes me want to do though. Tell Whenever me. I make a phone call or talk on my cell phone to anybody, fuck you, motherfucker! <laughs> and then I can be okay. Let's have a conversation. Then I'll be like, oh, just a second. Fuck you, motherfucker! NSA for listening to me. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> then I'll go like, what were you saying? Yeah, okay. She, anyway, I, just, so, I want them to know that I know they're listening. You know what I mean? Right. I want them to fucking know. <laughs> hey, sir, I know call. they're fucking listening. So, uh, anyway. And I her... think, fuck you, <laughs> unless I said, go fuck a monkey's ass. Then they'd probably really be like, what? 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 Yes, I'm talking to you, as a, and I say, go fuck a monkey's ass. <laughs> Fucker, All what right. are you going to do? Come get me right now. Okay, okay, Come okay. kill me right now, bitch. <laughs> okay, anyway, fuck. so this woman apparently. Listen in, bitch. This this right. wo this woman, uh, Gail King, apparently on her show CBS this morning, asked, "Can you help me understand how I could be having a private conversation with someone about something I'm interested in seeing or buying, and an advertisement for that will pop up on my Instagram feed?" Right. She asked, "I haven't searched for it. I haven't talked to anybody about right. it." Right. But they're, I, so they're listening. They I have swear. links in it, and all the new electronics you buy, uh -huh. there's a microphone in there. Or there's a camera and a microphone. And they can access your camera on your laptop. Yes, and they can ex access your fucking PC camera, too, if they wanted to. Right. Sure. They can do it. And they do it. So that means you don't know who the fuck's watching you have sex or take a shit. Yeah. You don't and, know. Anyway, so the, the ass... Watching you take a shit or have sex, possibly. Anyway, the, the ass hat from Instagram replied... That they aren't listening. He says, we don't look at your messages. We don't listen on your microphone. Doing so would be super problematic. Yeah, right. In other words, don't bring your cell phone in the fucking bathroom with you. Hey, or don't, don't. don't buy some smart shower head that plays tuned because there's a fucking camera in there, and they're going to watch you take a shower and take a shit. Just don't. You really want someone watching you take a shower and a shit. Don't, don't, don't have. Uh, I don't. I don't. That's like private time. Don't right? have. Don't Come have on. accounts. Don't have accounts. You know, I mean, you know, yeah. Even if I had the best body in the world, I wouldn't want you watching me. Just get take rid of if, if you yeah. have. If or you, take a shit. If you have those yeah. accounts, then then um. Right. 
they get rid of them. Get just get rid of them uh, because exactly. And and and, and purge everything all but the data you possibly can. It's so can. hard. It's so hard. Yeah. Yeah. So, you can't get rid of it because I have family members and friends on Facebook. And it's like I want to keep in touch. Yeah, 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 yeah. And people do that more. I mean, Instagram's worse though. Like Instagram, my kid has Instagram. Like I have yet to have Instagram. My right. kid is constantly on his phone. He'll take a selfie. He'll look and tweet. Do the Instagram. It's like, dude, what the fuck? I don't get it. I don't get the whole Instagram thing. I I I don't like it. You know, I have Facebook. That's bad enough. I the Instagram. It's like I don't know. No, 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 right. no. no. Right. I'm like, he's like, I'm like, show me what you just posted. Well, I didn't save it, so I can't show you. I'm like, you post a picture of me. You 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 post a picture of me, but you didn't save it. So I I need to know if the picture of me looked like shit or looked good. But you didn't <laughs> save it, so now I don't know. There's no way of you knowing. Right, right. He's like, it was okay, mom. I'm like, you're lying. <laughs> I'm like, and don't be taking pictures of me doing incriminating things. Yeah, yeah. You know, don't be taking pictures of me doing incriminating things. You know, okay. come on. All right. Well, I got I got more I got more I got more okay. uh, tech stories, but we'll get to those in a little bit. I'm gonna play some more music right now. All right, let's do that. And uh, you were gone about 30 minutes, a little less than that. Uh, Rob works, so pretty good uh, install time there for you. All right, this first track here that we're going to play in this set is a Rome's request. Something called Daft Punk Robot Rock. I'm I'm afraid. I'm very afraid. <laughs> but here it is for y'all. Daft Punk. You going to play? Oh yeah, very nice, very nice. That awesome piece of music, a sock puppet request by the way, was Eric Gales with Doyle Branhall too, doing South Paw Serenade. Uh, before that we had Willie Nelson, Seven Year Itch. Uh, that, that video just came out a couple days ago, or yesterday. Um, uh, it's off of his new album, I do believe. Uh, so yeah, Willie Nelson, Seven Year Itch, very good stuff. And we kicked it off with something a little weird there, Daft Punk doing Robot Rock, which uh, Hansel points out quite correctly sounds kind of along the Kraftwerk line. Uh, You're right. Yeah, it's yeah. An electronic uh, I saw I, I saw Kraftwerk when I was like 13 years old. Yeah. And uh, they they did their Autobahn song. Of course, everybody knows Autobahn. Right. Yeah. And uh, and nothing else. The from them. String Dusters actually do a cover of a Daft Punk song. <laughs> like they do a bluegrass version of it. Yeah. Of a Daft Punk song. I I'll have to look it up to find out. Which I, I'm one I'm it. really not I'll familiar. Let you know, I'll I'll let you know. I'll let you know which one you could. I think I actually shared it with her, but no, I shared a, the, the infamous String Dusters also do a cover of the Cure. The Cure, okay. Almost Heaven. And uh, Cirque was really scared at first to watch it. Because she's like, she loves cult, you know, the cult so much that she's like, I can't handle another version. Oh. But she watched it and she liked it. Cool. Yeah, yeah I, so, I'm, I'm, know, not, I'm really not familiar with Daft Punk at all. I've heard their name. Me either, except for the one song. I'm not, but, you know, because they're more electronica and I'm seriously not an electronica person. And that's just it, it, more power to people that like it, but it's just not my type of music. I, it's just not, and I don't, it's no no offense if you don't like that, you know, if you do like it or if you don't like it, I don't care. But not my style that I that I prefer. You know no, I, mean? I, I like I said, I don't really know anything about them. I don't really care about. I don't them like anymore. electronic music. It's it's it. Yes, it's it sounds, but it's not music to me. To me, <laughs> right. I mean, I'm old, though. See, all these people that are electronic, I've noticed they're like 20 years younger than me. <laughs> you know? So, or at least 20 years younger, you know. Right. But, yeah. Right. So, yeah, whatever. But, yeah. Go ahead. No, that's cool. You know, people are going to like what they like. 
My son likes John Denver. Here, this, uh, this... And he's 19. Yeah, well, whatever. You know, in 2019. Yeah. He likes John Denver. So, go over here, right? Anyway, since we were talking about uh, a little bit of the uh, internet connection, bandwidth, speed, things yes. like that, uh, this may or may or not be of uh, uh, di direct relevance to, to what we were talking about there in the chat. However, it could be useful for anybody if you've got um, either a large house or thick walls or uh, right, like means? I had to get the soup up the router because my son plays video games in the basement. Okay, well then, so I had to get like the soup up router so like the internet connection would be strong through all okay. the house. Okay, this this could be so. beneficial to you because I know okay. you yep. probably have some old wireless routers hanging around. Yeah, I do. Okay, I do. I so, do. so this exactly. article this article posted on lifehacker dot com. How to extend your Wi-Fi network. Oh, with, an, with an old router. Oh, cool. And it says, it is the most irritating scenario. You set up your router in your new house or apartment, and your right. Wi-Fi is working flawlessly. And right. you find your download screech to a halt in, yeah. that, in that area that's just outside your router's range. Right. Like the exact spot where you watch your Apple TV on the couch or stream your music music at your workbench or binge movies in bed. There are plenty of tricks you can use to squeak a little more range out of your existing equipment. If your networking gear is old or you don't want to deal with the hassle, a lot okay. of hassle, I normally recommend buying something new, a better router that supports right, the, right. the fastest wireless speeds that your devices right. can handle, a Wi-Fi mesh system with a dedicated backhaul connection, or even a super cheap Wi-Fi extender if you need a bit more range for simpler tasks. If, however, you don't feel like spending a single penny more for your setup, and you, you, have, you have an alternative, using an old router to extend or build onto your primary router's wireless wow. signal. Uh, yeah, you know the one. I, I, see, I, I have my, my setup right. here. Yeah. My, I, I actually run a cable. From this room all the way out to the front room, it's about 120 feet. I believe you. Yeah. Yeah. More than that. I, I don't know how long it is. But right. I've got thick walls, and then I've also got uh, wires running through the walls and ceiling for a, right. a heating system. So the signal, wireless signal doesn't get out there that well. So what, yeah, what, what I've got on the other end of this is I have another router, which I use primarily right. as a switch. But it also works as a wireless extender. For for my Amazon uh, Prime thingy uh, that I watch the movies on. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so you in, in this article it'll explain. You'll have to go through it and look at the the details See. in it. I, I could explain it all to you here, but it would be stupid to do because you, you really have to go through this. But it's really simple to do. There's, right, there's, and see, you know, remember when I was like going through all my my stuff and everything? I'm like, I got these routers. What should I do with them? You're like. You know, you didn't know, but this would be a good use for them. Yeah. Well, I, like I said, I used mine for a switch because I needed more connections out there. Right, um, right. I, like I said, I have one cable that runs from this room out there from, from the router in here. So and, let me uh, click this link so I have it. it well, it'll be in the blog, so. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, but still. Yeah. I just like still. to bookmark it. But, uh, it yeah, so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great way. I mean, you know, you got this old equipment that you that you. Uh, paid for anyway, and it's sitting right, around. Right, you might as well use it in you, instead somewhere. of wanting to just collect dust and so, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's it's a it's a good thing. Oh, Matt will like this article. Matt will like this because even with our souped up router that we have that we bought privately, you know. Yeah. He still has some issues a little bit, but you know, everyone's it, you can't do nothing if the ISP goes down. Right. If your internet provider goes down, you're fucked, dude. You're right. Yeah, but there's not but. Besides that happening, which is out of your control, the things you can control are possibly doing what this article says and extending to other parts of your house without spending extra money, just using what you already have. Right. Yeah, which is great, you know. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Make big use yeah. of it. So. Um, now, uh, for those of you that are uh, Linux Ubuntu users, uh, you may have been aware that Ubuntu was had fully intended on uh, dis discontinuing 
the 32-bit service, the 32-bit uh, support. And, and so in future releases of Ubuntu, you were not going to get any more 32-bit packages or installs, ISOs. They have now reversed that decision. Uh, so, uh, and to not only say to support the 32-bit packages, but also the 32-bit OSs. Uh, Can Canonical, which is the uh, repository, basically, uh, uh, for, for Ubuntu, has issued a statement on the Ubuntu's 32-bit future saying it will continue to build and maintain a 32-bit archive going forward, which is great for anybody that uses particular applications that are not available in 64-bit, or if you have an older machine that doesn't quite have the juice to run the 64-bit or the capability uh, to do it. So, um, anyway, says, of course, there was some negativity surrounding the decision, uh, as, com as is common with everything in the world today, in particular, the developers of Wine, which is uh, how you run Windows applications under Ubuntu right. or other I Linux versions, yep. uh, were upset since their Windows compatibility layer depends on 32-bit, which, by the way, Wine, get off your butts and develop a 64-bit version. Uh, right. Anyway, uh, <laughs> which that's, uh, anyway, apparently in a statement, Canonical said, thanks to a huge amount of feedback uh, this weekend from gamers, Ubuntu Studio, and the wine community, we will change our plan and build selected 32-bit uh, i386 packages for Ubuntu 19.10 uh, and 20.4 long-term serviceability or LTS systems, uh, long-term support, that's what it is, uh, LTS. Uh, we will put in place a community process to determine which 32-bit packages are needed for support legacy. See, and that's kind of a problem because they're not going to catch them all. And, uh, no, you know. no. Anyway, well, whatever. Um, so they're, they're, they're going to do that. They're going to support some, anyway, of the 32-bit packages. And the developers will just have to do the the rest on their own, um, which is eh, eh, whatever. Anyway, so like I said, a lot, a lot of a lot of tech stories here today um, that, I, that I had to cover, and I think I got maybe yeah, cool. No, good good knowledge, Jim. I mean, especially the extending the lot, the okay. you know the uh, router okay. capability. Okay, well, this is one for you. You have an Android phone, right? Yes, I do. What what? what Brand model of Android. It's um, uh, Magnavox. Okay, that's that's probably a major brand. So you're probably not. Uh, yeah, it's a major brand. You're, you're probably not involved in this here. Right. But other people have cheaper Android phones that they buy. Yep. Google confirms presence of Triada backdoor in cheap Android phones. What is that like? It's a virus or something? It's or a Trojan. Bacteria? It's a Trojan. It's a banking Trojan. The oh. Triada banking Trojan came pre-installed as a backdoor in budget Android smartphones. Of course they did. Google. Because they know they target poor people. They, like, seriously, it's a tactic that they do. Anyway, so. They, they, yeah, they do it. It yep. says it will pro probably be fine, the first but. time ever in Google's history that the company has revealed details of the tenacity and success of the malware dubbed as Triada. Triada malware was discovered in 2017 and came pre-installed on Android devices. It was believed back then that the malware was added to the devices at any stage of the supply chain process. Now, Holy shit. Now Google has revealed that the cyber criminals indeed managed to comprom compromise Android smartphones and installed the back door while, uh, while the supply chain process of the phone was underway. Triada is known for downloading additional Trojan components on an Triada, infected... Triada, a.k.a. NSA, CIA. Uh, no, these these are these are thieves Hired out there. Hired by the NSA and CIA. Well, I, I don't know who hires them or whatever. Yes, but they, know, there are you thieves. Know there are people out there that want to steal your banking information and and. Really. Oh, absolutely. Oh, you know it. <laughs> so they're, that's known for uh, downloading additional Trojan components on the infected device which then steals sensitive data from banking apps, intercepts chats from messengers and social media platforms, and there are also cyber espionage spying models on the device. 
It's worth noting that Google remains silent as this uh, on the, about this issue until uh, now, but th this week the firm's Android security and privacy team uh, member Lu Lucas Sawerski posted an in-depth analysis of the Triada banking trojan on the Google security blog. Uh, in that blog post, he admitted that the malware does exist as, on new Android devices. So in 2016, Kapersky Lab uh, researchers identified what was probably the most advanced of all mobile banking Trojans at the time. The Trojan, oh, I mean, let, me, let me just say this to you. Never, ever, 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 ever do banking on your freaking cell phone. <laughs> Just don't do it. It's not. It's not safe. You don't want. Just do your banking from your home computer. If you don't have a home computer, then don't do banking on the computer. Right. I, I, I just. I cannot yeah. stress this enough. Um. Anyway. But you know what, Graham? It doesn't really matter because they're watching it all. Oh, I know. But but that is uh, that is but the that's least. A, that's a hack. That that's that, a hack. that is the. I mean, banking on on your cell phone is the least possible safe thing you could do. Right. It's, it's horrible. Anyway, they list a whole bunch of different uh, models here of, of the cell phones that were identified. Okay, cool. That does not mean that these are the only ones uh, out there that have it, but these are, are the, some ones that right. they said, look. The, the, it's, it's the cheapy ones. It's the knockoff versions. It's the ones that are like targeting poor people because they can't afford Verizon or whatever. Right. So, if you so go then they here, go for a lesser brand. And then they get fucked. Right. You walk into your local so you get Walmart. Double fucked. You walk into your local Walmart. And it's not you pick up a phone. Fucking, and, it's, it's the bad kind of. Oh, fucking. this is yeah. This is horrible. This, this is not the good kind of. Fucking. Th this is being no, fucked. This with is the, not the making love kind of. Fucking. No. The, this is being fucked up the ass without loop. With a chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're gonna do our last. We're gonna do. We're gonna do our last set here. Okay. All right. <laughs> Oh, you 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 know. Love. I'm glad I could join you. you know. I am too. That's been great. It's been awesome. right. as usual. You'll you'll yeah. love the, you'll love this first song here. I'm sure I will. And maybe the third song too. I don't know. Oh, I'm sure I'll love all of the songs. All right. Well, here you go. <laughs> Thank you, girl. Is it playing? Why is it, why is it not clicking? Oh, Black Better. Christopher Amoroso there. Yes, he is like the king of swamp music. Well, one of them. Justin Johnson's another good swamp yeah, music guy. very good stuff. Yeah. Uh, anyway, his version of Black Betty there. Before that, a uh, new uh, one from the Dead South. Moose Girl Request there. Yes. Nice one. Diamond Ring. Uh, that video just came out on uh, Tuesday. Yes, it did. So new brand making new. Yep, yep, good stuff. Uh, before that, a Hansel request, Thin Lizzy and a Jailbreak. And we kicked it off with the Traveling Wilburys doing uh, Runaway by Del Shannon. Yeah, I love that band so yeah, much. Yeah, it's, it's a great it's a great version of that tune as well. Yes, I love that band, yes, All thank right. you. Okay, well, we're done, but tomorrow you got the Dark yep. Table at noon with Flash and... Maybe a co-hostage, Vinny, Grammy, Boosie. Co-hostage. I like how you put that. I like that. Well, that's, that's Flash's term. That's Flash's term. So, anyway, so, uh, yeah, we got... The, 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 so, tune in to the Dark Table tomorrow at noon. I'll be on Sunday at noon, uh, 11.45, uh, with the Blues here. We'll be playing the trivia in the chat. Uh, then following me, immediately following me, will be Hal Anthony behind the widget at 3 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, 3 p.m. Eastern, 9 o'clock Pacific. I'll be back Monday right. evening with Grim Leftovers, serving up that cold stories. Yeah, they're not yes. quite heated leftovers. They're cold right. leftovers. So uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern. But still important. Very important. Oh, yeah. Oh, good stories. Good stories. Uh, yeah, and good. then uh, Tuesday at, well, 2 a.m., uh, Eastern time. In the time. morning, 2 a.m. people. 2 a.m. Eastern time, or this 8... what time? Denmark time. Or 8 a.m. Denmark time. 8 a.m. Yeah. Denmark time. So, you'll yeah, get, it's like... I would say you get Flash and... I would say you get Flash and Vinny, but pretty much you just get Flash. 
Yeah. Uh, there. At that time, yeah, you're only gonna get Flash in know? a perfect you know, world. He, in a per- he does a good show, you know. Yeah, you know? Yes, absolutely. In a perfect world. Uh, and then uh, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, Grammy's Rocket Chair once again. I rolls love through. Grammy's Rocket Chair. It's yep. like, yeah, I love that show. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect show. Uh, and then uh, Thursday in our afternoon, 2 p.m. in the Friday Eastern afternoon. You get Flash in 20 per, and 20% off. 20% Such a, off. Such a 20% deal. Off, Such a deal. Step right up. <laughs> anyway, Roll, back. Yeah, roll back around to Friday. So, everybody, have yourselves a great weekend. Have a kick ass weekend. Well, I'm, not, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. If you don't want to, have a great weekend. Have a don't. Yeah, if you, you don't know. want to, then don't. But right. I would suggest having a kick ass weekend. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Yeah, uh, I will. I should be. Okay, so we'll see you for Freakers Ball yes, next Friday will. night. Peace. Peace.